Hey everyone, Sekre Yasin here, and today I have the great pleasure of interviewing my friend Cynix from Cynix Design, the fabulous YouTube page where if you're not a subscriber, you should be. And let's just talk about what what is on your site. Um, what kind of videos do you have on your YouTube page? Oh, first of all, hi Sykra. Thanks for having me, and hi all the awesome Sykra viewers. Uh, but yeah, on my YouTube channel, it's just a lot of art content. Well, similar to what Psyker has, but I also try to do a lot of stuff that is, I don't know, not quite just about drawing, but more on art philosophies and maybe more like, I don't know, observing art around us and, um, you know, the, the, the stranger side of art, I guess you can say. I think one thing you cover that I don't really touch is uh, hard surfaces like uh, you, you do vehicles sometimes environments um, <laughs> you do a lot of things you you are one of the most well-rounded artists that I've seen um, I think that probably has a lot to do with my I don't know my interest in art really started springing up just from wanting to improve at something and seeing people that were good at something and maybe I'm just like a jealous person, but it's not really that. It's just some kind of weird comp competitive thing in me. Uh, but like learning stuff and getting good, that's where all the fun is and leveling up. Um, and it's, you know, once you get to certain parts, um, it's hard to keep that motivation. So it's like you find other like aspects of creativity and art that you don't necessarily have any talent in and you try to level up in those. So I think that's what's led to me just kind of experimenting with uh, different mediums and different kind of forms of art as much as I can. Wow, so was that something you always had even, you know, just being a young kid? Um, yeah, you know, I would say I was always trying different things and I don't know, it's, it's kind of silly, but I always remember like different Christmases and everything. It felt like every year I had a new hobby that I was like telling my parents, "Oh, I'm super serious about this. I need, I need, uh, you know, maybe a guitar. I need the skateboard because I'm totally just gonna be super into that." And it just kind of was an endless cycle of having way too many hobbies and way too many interests. And I wasn't really interested in art, but I found definitely a lot of other interests. So, how did you decide on art then? Uh, well, when I was like real little, I thought art was awesome, but I, I guess that's pretty common. I think every little kid likes to draw in color, and for some reason, I guess there's a point when being a little kid where uh, it stops getting encouraged as much, because it seems like once you get into grade school, that's where, you know, some kids stay artists and continue to do the drawing, but other kids, most kids just kind of, you know, fall off from that. and don't really draw much and I was one of those kids where I loved drawing as a kid but then it fell off and I got into other things like computer programming and that was really all I wanted to do for a living um, but it wasn't until after high school uh, when you have to really concentrate and be like oh God, I gotta figure out what to do for a living um, and I was kind of lost because I needed something that was gonna give me some sort of outlet for creativity but I hadn't really thought about drawing because uh, in my mind all the kids that you know if you wanted to be an artist you had to have been doing it through high school and I always saw those kids drawing a lot and I was like I don't know it just never occurred to me that I could just jump into it at any age and be good at it but um, yeah I tried a bunch of different things writing I was an airplane pilot for a little bit I was I was all sorts of things you, but you're an airplane pilot <laughs> Yeah, uh, when I was 19, like for, I don't know, six months, I was getting my license, and that's, I was like, okay, I'm just going to do that for a living, I'm going to fly planes, um, but eventually I, I realized that I wasn't that great at it because I still suffered from air sickness now and then, and you know, if you're getting air sick now and then, it's not really the best job for you, um, so yeah, then there was another mad scramble, and I think it was after that that I tried writing. And then writing led me to trying, like, wanting to try comics, but not in, like, a serious, like, artistic thing. I was just like, oh, I'll just draw crappy little, like, webcomic stuff. Because uh, those were real popular, like, uh, different websites were coming up at the time that were, you know, webcomics. Uh, so I think 
I started with that, and then somehow through the magic of the internet, it led me to just get more and more interested in the drawing side of things, and here we are now. So why didn't you pursue computer programming? Uh, you know, it's really just like a, a tedious thing, and I, I don't want to discourage anyone who loves computer programming, because I loved it too, but I guess when I thought about it, or when I first got into it, I thought, this is going to be something I can use to create interesting games and things. And it is, but that creativity, that energy, it just gets kind of drawn out of you like anytime you're working on a project because it's just a lot of a lot of tedium, a lot of figuring it out things just to get to that one creative you know, expression. And I guess that also shows up in my artwork. I'm not very good at uh, rendering things out. I don't think I've ever spent... Um, you know, like multiple days just working on the same piece like I see some people do. And I kind of admire that a lot. But for me, it's just like, yep, you know, fire it off, you know, get that first painting done, that nice and loose where you can see all the brush strokes. And that's all you need. That's the idea. It's out there. It's done. Right. Wow. Did you did you come from a family of artists or? Uh, no, actually, I don't know. You know, my grandparents uh were actually very creative and artistic. I remember they would sometimes be painting, and they were both into photography. In fact, my uh, grandma taught uh, photography, but that was way back when, before I really, you know, I wasn't around them when they were being that uh, kind mm. of creative person. Um, so that's about it. I don't, I don't know. There's no one else in my family, and my sister was always, I guess, more of a creative person as well, like in grade school and everything. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know. Were your parents supportive then of your different ambitions? <laughs> uh, well, not always. I mean, they really wanted me to go to college and everything, and I don't know, but they've been reasonably supported, supportive of uh, art, surprisingly, even though I'm pretty lazy at it and haven't really shown any sign of, you know, being a successful kind of career-driven person. They've still been um, pretty understanding and supportive, uh, which is nice. I don't know. I've always been pretty good at just exp or at least being able to kind of make people understand that I'm interested in something, you know, and right. try to come off as a reasonable person about it. Yeah, it's not like I was blowing up, like, why don't you understand? You, you know, I was always very rational and trying to be like, you know, I this is, I know it's it's a long way off, but if I work at this, it can turn into something decent that I enjoy doing for a living. Okay, so I'm really curious then, as someone who, it doesn't sound like you were really, like, focused on art the whole way through, so how did you take something that I guess other people might just call it a hobby and turn it into something serious like that's that transition um what was that like um uh, i don't you know it was really it it's hard to say there was ever a transition away from being a hobby because um even now it's it's really something that i'm not good at doing as a, like a career and people always ask me you know what studio do you work at or you know what projects have you been working on you know, for like major games and things, and it's just like I'm not good at that. I, when it stops being a hobby, I'm just my creativity is really suffers, and I feel like the art that I do create is just not. I don't know. It doesn't have the same flow and energy of the stuff I make when I'm really focused on it as a hobby and trying to learn something new. Um, so I don't. I don't know if it ever really transitioned. I've never looked for a job in art, and I was never ready to have one, or at least I still feel like I'm not ready to have one, uh, but jobs came my way just through other people. Uh, but to me, I was like, why are you offering me jobs? I'm just doing this for fun. This is just what I do as, as a hobby, but I don't know. I don't know. Did you, did you have a backup plan then? <laughs> Uh, I've had lots of backup plans, maybe, but not good backup plans. I don't know. I came to this realization that uh, no matter what I was going to do in life, it probably would be very chaotic in how I actually got by, just kind of pulling in scraps from here and there. I mean, I've, I've done day trading. I've done, you know, just all sorts of weird projects I did 
what I was making websites for people for about one year, and I was doing them cheap for artists, just like hundred dollars a pop. I'll make you a quick website; it'll be good. Just using kind of programming stuff and not really the design side of it. I'm like, you can do the design stuff. I'll just make it into a working website. And I don't know. I just find any any way to kind of scrape by. Hmm. Okay. So. But okay, so during that transition, though, wasn't was there a period where you had to take art seriously? And what I mean by that is like really, a lot of people open up their Andrew Loomis books or their Bridgman, and it's like, okay, I got to learn anatomy now. I got to learn perspective now. Was it uh, that period? Yeah, there was kind of, and it was when I stumbled onto conceptart.org and really saw like the passion of, I guess, real artists. Because before that, I had just been, you know, bumping around, doing my thing on DeviantArt. And, um, you know, DeviantArt's fine. There's a lot of passionate artists, but you don't really get a feeling for their identity the same way you do, like, on a forum where you're looking at their sketches and they're really, like, talking to each other in, like, meaningful ways about critiques. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that's missing from DeviantArt. When you, when you don't see someone critique something, like, in a very, like, serious and thought-out way, you know, I've, I've seen page-long critiques... Um, and those are the things that really get me inspired for some reason. Uh, just when people really pick something apart, uh, that just makes me be like, wow, I want to I wanna understand all these things he's talking about and get good at it. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, w one of the things I really find with concept art is just seeing... It, it just feels like everyone's working really, really hard. Um, yeah. Especially when you go to their sketchbook threads and... Wow, I, I need to I need to work harder. Yeah, it was it was also very competitive. Um, yeah, at least it was back then. It's still I guess it's to some degree, but um, I remember people you know like Jason Manley like calling people out like you know they didn't they had their little art beefs like some people weren't getting along they just challenge each other to like art battle be like I'm better than you, um, and I don't really see that much anymore. And maybe that's you know kind of questionable, but. They just all were striving to be like as good as they could be. So you mentioned, I think, uh, to me that you had a period where you were working like eight hours a day just drawing. Yeah, that was definitely that time. Right when I found conceptart.org, I went to one of their workshops. You know, just being like a wide-eyed, you know, observer. You know, new to the art scene, and I came back from it. It was right after I got back from that first. Uh, concept art workshop that I basically just was like just so overfilled with this like kind of uh, this this <laughs> this I don't know what to call it this this strong feeling of artistic um, well I guess it's just inspiration I guess that's the easiest word to say but yeah I was just filled with that inspiration and I was drawing in my sketchbook every day like four pages of the sketchbook then do some digital painting and just every day that was the schedule and I was posting all of it online and um, that was really the huge growth period where I focused on learning as much as I could and that's I think all the knowledge I learned from that maybe six eight month period is it's been keeping me alive even through today Wow so it was just eight months of about eight hours a day yeah and it was during like the end of that eight months where I started getting job offers from serious like major video game companies and I you know after eight months of serious drawing I, I really felt confused and not ready for it and I made the mistake of like taking some of those jobs and just you know completely stressing myself out and making a mess of my kind of art <laughs> my art life by taking those jobs when I didn't quite feel ready for them you... um, but yeah I like to tell people that if you work hard enough, you know, you can be a professional artist this year, this year right now. You want to be, like, a, work for these fancy big companies and make games or make a comic, do anything. You can achieve that within a year. Art isn't some long-term thing that you need to kind of be planning six years ahead. You can, you can do it now. You just have to kind of be focused on it. So would you say that starting out you were not t talented or you were talented? You were kind of, you know, would you say you were good <laughs> for your age? Or? No. Well, not for my age, definitely. When I started out, I was, you know, 20 years old, pretty much. 
and I, I would look at my art, and I was basically doing what a lot of new people do, just drawing anime <laughs> and stuff like that, and just really kind of lazy work, very iconic stuff, you know, focusing on, like, iconic anime stuff. And I would say it looks like roughly a 13-year-old's level of art. You know, it wasn't, like, completely incompetent. And I think the only reason it wasn't was just because I had some confidence in myself. I don't know why. Um, but that's always been the key. I've never believed in talent. You know, I don't believe you're born with any talent. I don't believe little kids that are prodigies have talent. I just believe they have confidence. And that was always something you can gain. And it was probably instilled in them. The people you think are talented just had confidence instilled in them. And it was probably through parents or just being around people. Um, but yeah, talent is a very kind of questionable concept. But uh, confidence, that, that's, a, that's, a te- <laughs> that's the real talent that I believe in. So when you say like parents instill, is it just you know hanging up the kids drawing on the fridge? It could be. I mean, it's, it's just everything. For some reason, you know, you get that positive reinforcement and everyone tells you, hey, you're good at something. And uh, yeah, that's, it, it makes you better at it. And that's, art is so reliant on um, just being optimistic and being confident. Because, um, I mean, you think about art, you know, what is it? It's not some muscle control thing that I can do. It's not some trick like that. It's all just, you know, mental thing. It's, it's turning a visual library into, you know, something on paper and using kind of a, a certain level of confidence to, to do it, you know, reliably a lot of the times. Because I think everyone's had off days and sometimes you might feel like you can't draw and everything you draw that day will be pretty bad. But some days you feel confident and everything you're making feels good. Um, and, you know, it's just a huge factor. Cool. So I'm actually kind of... I don't know, I feel kind of bad to ask you this, but I'm I'm quite curious. Uh, you said you were working for a studio and it sort of just didn't work out. Um, yeah. What didn't work out? Like, what was the challenge that that you weren't expecting? Um, you know, it, this was, you know, after those eight months of serious art, serious art study, um, I got a job with Electronic Arts. They just contacted me out of nowhere. And they were like, hey, we're going to develop a new IP, and guess what? You can be in charge of all the fancy illustration, you know, concept production design. And I was like, wow, that's kind of the dream job that I always wanted, so I guess I'll take it. Are you, you know? And I didn't really be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't tell them that, but that was all I was thinking about inside. And, and were you still 20 or 21 at this this time? Yeah, I was like 20... <sighs> Two, I think, because okay, um, so there was there was, a, there was like a couple years where I started drawing, but not seriously. And I I count that as when I started art, but it was when I was like 22, 23, where th- that kind of stretch of actually taking it seriously came in. Uh, so yeah, that was that was a long time ago. That was like seven, eight years ago. Right. So you're 31 now. Or? Yeah, I just turned 31. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, oh so, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't really finish it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so I took the job with them, and it was the stress that I wasn't prepared for. The the pressure to actually be creative on demand. I hadn't experienced that, and I think that's where going to school helps a lot of people. As much as I hate to say it, because I'm self taught, uh, but school will teach you how to deal with deadlines and stress and making stuff that you don't want to make. Uh, and when it comes to creativity, and I never had those pressures, you know, in a creative sense, um, and it was just completely overwhelming for me, and uh, just all around, I think, a bad experience. Wow. So, what would what would a typical day look like then at when you were working at EA? Uh, well, I was. I mean, it was freelance, so. Oh, okay. I wasn't in studio working, mm-hmm. so it wasn't like uh, me going there and just like peeing in the corner for a while and then leaving. Um, It was just me, like, uh, freaking out and having panic attacks and trying to make some art. And I made some decent kind of concept stuff, uh, but just not being able to do enough because I was so, I don't know, focused on trying to be perfect, which I just was so far from. 
and it's really frustrating when you have that kind of competitive feeling and this anxiety about being creative and yeah I just I couldn't get past that hmm so then after that um, did you feel your confidence was shaken or uh... Uh, it was definitely shaken I mean there's I mean I didn't draw as much for a long time I wasn't painting much and it was kind of turning into this uh, off and on cycle that I'm still kind of going through but you know it's <laughs> it's it's more uh, it's like a little different these days but back then yeah it was kind of like a big kind of drawback and um, I was you know I would just retreat into playing video games and doing other stuff instead of the drawing that I had been so focused on Hmm. And and then, eventually, you started the YouTube channel. So when when did that happen? And uh, why, why did you do that? Yeah, that happened uh, not that long after the um, kind of whole electronic art stuff and everything like that. I started it just because I had not seen many people paint, and I loved to see it. And the only person I had seen was a. Uh, Fang Zhu because he had just released some new DVDs which was like a fancy new thing and you can even hear how like mystified he was by the process of like commenting over something sped up and it just I don't know it wasn't that great but I was like wow this has a lot of kind of fun and potential to it uh, so I was like I want to share stuff too and just made my first videos and you can hear in my voice during those first ones like how kind of I don't know, stressed or just, you know, worn out I was. I'm lifeless. I just, you know, I'm in, I'm in pain, kind of. And then when I'm making those, like, in the background, just in my life, it wasn't, like, a great time. Uh, but I made the videos, and I kind of also just wanted to, like, uh, kind of just, you know, gel together all the ideas I had on certain things. Um, say it was anatomy or design theory. Uh, which is kind of just what the early videos were. I just wanted to kind of really reflect and figure out uh, my own personal views on those things. And that, you know, making videos was pretty much mm, just for myself to some degree, but the, I think doing it for other people is the motivation to do something for yourself. Yeah, it's, it's also a really big test to see if you actually know what you're talking about or yeah. you, you might think you understand the subject it's like okay now teach it like, oh, yeah exactly I, I, I don't get this at all that, it is a great way to learn learn through teaching it's, mm. it's great um, okay so you started out doing painting videos and teaching but you really branched out a lot um, I've seen so many different genres or categories in your videos um there's the let's explore deviant art that you were doing for a while um and then you created design lab which do you want to do you want to talk a bit about design lab and what that is uh yeah i guess design lab has been the most popular series I've, uh, I've done i don't know i took a break after those early videos and then i came back and i was like okay you know drawings is one thing and it's fun to watch people just speed paint stuff and um, you know, talk about it, which was even rarer because there were videos of people speed painting, but uh, you were around back then, although I wasn't really aware of you. Uh, but it was very rare to find someone actually speed painting and talking about what they were doing. Um, but even rarer in my mind was, okay, how about there's just stuff that's about art, but not quite in the just simple speed painting process, maybe the whole design process. So. I thought, okay, but how about I start with thumbnails and then have other people, you know, pick a thumbnail and then I'll develop based on that. And it's kind of, you know, a collaborative design process. And the main theory behind me making that was the importance of getting out of your comfort zone because it's very easy to, I, for me, to just make a bunch of thumbnails then pick, okay, this is the one I'm comfortable with. This is the one I know where it's going to go and I'm just going to, you know, work from there. But when you have other people picking them, suddenly that whole comfort zone is thrown off and you have to kind of expand your skills and learn new things. And that was that was really the um, inspiration for Design Lab was the idea of getting out of your comfort zone. And it definitely still is for me, although, you know, viewer participation part has actually turned into other people making the thumbnails. 
And so I want to kind of just let other people, you know, explore their creativity and their thumbnailing process, which is a very important part of, you know, designing is thumbnailing. Um, and, but for me, the, the whole comfort zone part is like off the scale now. It stresses me out on some of the videos when I have to, you know, I basically have to render someone else's idea. And it's like, I can barely understand the idea. I got to make a full illustration. I'm so far out of the things I would normally be painting. And so the whole comfort zone thing is definitely continuing strong. I can't think of a video series that makes me more uncomfortable than having to do that because people always pick the one that is just the hardest. Not the hardest for me, but like the weirdest, the one that I would least likely pick. Somehow it always gets picked and I'm always surprised at the one people pick. So how do you... What what do you tell yourself then? How do you talk yourself out of this very stressed? Uh... Um, I don't, how do I? I don't know. It's it's not as stressful, I guess, because it's still. I, I get. I'm still playing by my own rules. I mean, it's stressful, but it's like in a good way. It's not the same as having. If I had to do design lab for other people, like as a profession and like have them you know kind of be like here's a bunch of thumbnails you gotta pick this one this one right here and make it into an illustration and you know we're we're paying you for this and then i think it would be really difficult but i i don't know it's it's not super stressful but on the other hand it is and i think uh that didn't make sense but i think i've actually compensated for that by doing weird things in the ones that make me very uncomfortable like, I'll do an animation for one just because I feel uncomfortable rendering it. And, oh, that's like a secret, but that's actually why I do, like, sometimes a, a weird kind of finale to those videos, more experimental, just because I'm feeling, I don't know, stressed out about it. And even the last one had a, a guest person doing it, and that just, it helped me feel more comfortable about doing my own because I was like, it's okay, there's another person doing one too, so mine doesn't have to be super great as long as, you know, there's there's a couple of them, so. Right. Things like that. I remember when I saw your animations, you did, like, pixel art and uh -huh. sprites, and I was just thinking, like, oh, okay, so obviously you went to animation school <laughs> or something, and then you told me, no, you actually hadn't, and... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about animation, and you probably you won't say see that it. you say that, but it it's looks true. really it's, solid. I think that's just because I have a very energetic approach to everything I try to do, and so with animation, I just try to make it really energetic. And I I don't know how to do it, so I'm just kind of looking at individual frames and being like, okay, this is what's going to happen next frame. Like, look at all this, you know, kind of motion and action that's going to happen. And I'm just kind of, you know, thinking about it like that. And not even really thinking about the timing of how things happen. It's just like, this is cool. This is cool. Just like one frame after the other. And I, I would never teach it because that I know that's not how you're supposed to do animation. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, have you ever experimented around with that stuff? Um... I haven't experimented with pixel art. I mean, I went to animation school, so I learned yeah. the quote-unquote proper <laughs> way of doing things, but it's one of these things where I've seen a lot of people who didn't go to animation school, and the work they do is just amazing. Um, and it's like, wait, why, why did I learn from school then? <laughs> Maybe I should have just tried to figure things out myself. Yeah. I mean, I guess that really is just, though, school teaches you how to be a good employee and uh you know just if you learn it on your own that teaches you to be more creative i guess but yeah. you know you can be a good employee you can go work and give them your little time frames and everything and do very just simple straightforward animations that is very passable and very very um structured uh, but they might not have the same energy as someone who doesn't know what the hell they're doing right so do you spend a lot of your days drawing and painting now, or how does that go? Uh, I I am probably the laziest artist around. I I went, I don't know, most of last year without even drawing or painting anything, and I 
I don't know. It's it's very off and on for me. So I I would say I'm pretty unproductive when it comes to day to day painting. Most days I don't actually draw at all. Hmm. Do you do? Uh, I had an interview with Art German. He said he does this thing called mental sketching, where he uh, sort of visualizes things. Do you do, do I that? S- I spend a lot of time thinking about art. Like I, it's not just something that I don't think about at all. Then I'm just come back to you once in a while. I'm always thinking about it. I'm just not drawing that much. Uh, so any time when I'm out and about, I'm making little mental notes. And usually they have to do with relationship, <laughs> relationships, um, and I'm mainly talking about like how something will relate to something, like how close an eye is to a nose, or I'm just looking at those things and trying to figure them out, how, like how dark this value is compared to this one. And I do that in a pretty constant, just all day long basis. And usually it's just not even thinking about it, but I'm always looking at and observing everything. And I'm also, like, focused on when I'm watching a movie, I have a confidence in my head that I'm actually building my visual library. And that when I get done watching this fun movie, this fun action movie, no matter what it is, uh, that I'll be a better artist. And I guess, you know, it all comes back to just having confidence that no matter what you do, even if you don't draw you're still going to get better just because you've seen another day's work, another day's worth of, uh, you know, images. It doesn't have to be something interesting, just the room you're in, everything around you. These are all, you know, visual information that you can observe and kind of have in your brain. Hmm. So in terms of, let's say there's foundation and there's visual library, which oh and then maybe there's hand skills you know uh dexterity the ability yeah. to put the line where you want it to go which to you would be uh more important of those three what was the first one again foundations and then the uh, second one was uh, visual library I don't, you know visual library is definitely the most important when it comes to actually creating something new creating stuff um, and, you know, dexterity, muscle control, that's that's really low on the list. The only time it comes in handy is for the case of doing stuff fast. Like, it, and it helps a lot, don't get me wrong. Like, I always do my exercises, my little hand exercises, draw circles and ellipses and straight lines that are parallel to each other. I do those just so I am I can work fast and I don't have to constantly be restarting or, you know, worried about messing up a line. Uh, but those don't matter to some degree in terms of your final product. Um, even if I didn't have my arms and I broke all my fingers, you know, playing video games, um, I would still be able to draw with my feet. Maybe it would just be a lot slower. But all the all the same, you know, information is still up in my brain. So, uh, yeah, definitely the first parts are more important. And I'm not even sure what you mean by foundations to some extent. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, like proportion, perspective, anatomy, um, oh, I see. understanding uh, values. And... Yeah, I mean, all that stuff's important. Um, when when you say foundations, I'm not sure if you like how you mean it. Like, if you mean like structuring, like how you draw things into like a, like a very formulaic way because when any time I heard foundation it sounds very boring just the word itself it sounds like oh this is, this is how you do something this is the foundation and then you build up on it it's like the you know some kind of right thing. right yeah I, I mean I guess um it's the sort of thing where let's say I wanted to draw the computer in front of me well I would see it as well this is a box in perspective and it's it's kind of flat and you know things like that where I'm trying to break things down and understand okay if I was to to draw this well there's angles here and this value here and things like that I suppose um, yeah because I, I think I mean that that's good but to some degree I, I like to be a little loose on that stuff because I don't know I like to always look at things like uh, in different ways like, if I get too in my mind that, okay, I'm going to draw a box like this, you know, sometimes I'll just draw and focus on only negative spaces or just do things that are, I don't know, slightly unnatural in the way you render something. And those all give, like, a different kind of... Even though it'll look very similar, they have a very different energy. So 
they kind of can change how you render something. Right, right. Um, so how did you get from doing those videos and to the, the Nintendo 3DS <laughs> stuff? Because if, if you haven't, if you're not following Cynix's videos lately, he's been doing this thing where he he posts at the end of his videos like this QR code, and if you have a Nintendo <laughs> 3DS, I don't I, fully I, I understand it. I found it the it, only but... use for QR codes ever. <laughs> you scan it with your 3DS, and then what happens? Like a 3D image appears in your yeah. You get a full 3D image. It's it's just a fun. I don't know. I'm really big on just like these weird little side hobbies. I, I, it's hard to call them side hobbies when it's all kind of related, but. I like just having fun with art as much as I can, and um, I, don't, I don't remember exactly where that came from. I guess because I had a 3DS, you know, I got one to play games, uh, but then I actually saw, like, someone mentioned that, oh, you can actually get images, you know, that you make, like photographs that you make stereoscopic, and you can get them to there, and I'm like, I can get my stuff onto there? I'm just going to draw something and make it stereoscopic, so... Uh, I just thought that would be so fun to actually try to paint something and paint it, you know, like, a, and then make it stereoscopic and then look at a painting in 3D, and that just seemed a lot of fun. So, I don't know. I, I don't know where all these things come from, but I just love to think of new things to do with art and just always keep it fun. Yeah, I just I kind of imagine, like, it sounds like you go off on tangents. <laughs> I'm always off on tangents. And it's like I get very obsessed with something and then it's gone. Like uh, I made my graffiti video a month ago and basically that week I just, just focused on graffiti nonstop, morning, noon, and night. And when I would uh, go to sleep in my brain I was picturing words and graffiti type and like all the tangents lining up just because I was so focused on it. But then after I made the video I haven't done any graffiti stuff. It's like not even a thing. So I don't know, It's I'm very just focused and obsessive about whatever topic comes along. I guess there, there's more negative words to describe that type of personality, like fickle, but um, nonetheless, it's it's fun to me. Yeah. So what do you find is more interesting to you, creating art or teaching art? Uh, lately, definitely teaching. And in fact, most of the art I make is only for <laughs> YouTube videos. Oh, really? And it's... Yeah, I don't think I've done any art outside of my videos lately. Um, it's that's it's so I don't know. It's there's just something fun about it, and it's like a challenge every time. And that goes back to what I said about it, just liking the challenge of stuff. Because I mean, I could paint something you know that I know, and that used to be really satisfying, just to go into my comfort zone, paint a robot, and you know it's it's good, it's fun, it makes you feel good. Uh, but there's a challenge when I have to teach something and I always be thinking, okay, what haven't I taught? What would be a fun video? And then I have an idea and then all of a sudden it's, it takes off from there and it's really exciting. Wow. So it's, just a, it's a fun process. So what challenge do you have in store for yourself next? Ah, uh, that, that's tough. You know, I have a, I think you might do this too, but I have a text on my computer that is just backlog of ideas for videos and it's literally just me writing stuff out I write something probably once every couple of days and I so there's way more ideas than I actually make videos and I have some really weird stuff on there um, just all kinds of strange ideas what's, what's, um, what's some of the weird things you have there um I don't know I don't it's hard to say like I read it sometimes and I don't remember what's on there, and I'm just like, what is this idea? It's just like random gibberish that you see. It'll be, just say something like, I don't know, like, uh, I can't even think of an, an example, but um, just really weird combinations of words, and it's hard to decipher sometimes, like, what was going on in my head, uh, but there's strange things. I don't know. I want to do a video on Legos. That would be fun, right? Let's make cool mechs out of Legos because I've seen people do it and I was like, oh, is, that'd be fun. Maybe we can make a video about this and actually try to figure out the design process that goes on with Lego art <laughs> and weird stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, 
I've also been thinking about butts lately, and <laughs> I think I'm gonna do a video on that maybe next week if I if I have the time. Yeah, I saw you were doing um, your latest one was on uh, African skin tones. Yeah, and were you planning to go through other ethnicities? Um, yeah, probably. I, but I wasn't gonna do it right away. I was gonna give myself some time first, but I, I'm definitely gonna do like an Asian one. And I don't know. Can you think of any any other races that are fun to draw? I don't know. Uh, Indian maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I can't even say. It. No, me and Psyker were joking about it before how no one draws Indian people or no one wants to draw Indian people. Well, Cynics was joking about that. He said, oh, okay. "I said, hey, Cynics, why don't you do your next?" video on how to draw Indian people and he said no one wants to draw Indian people and I said oh. yeah and then he cried wah, a little wah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so cynics what yeah. advice would you give to aspiring artists who want to get into pro art professionally or maybe they just want to keep it as a hobby um I mean if you want to get better it's just all about confidence Every time you pick up a pen and draw something, even if you, it sucks, just tell yourself, okay, I got better. That's all you have to believe. And you have to believe it. It's not just, don't, don't like, kid yourself. You, you have to believe it because it's true. Just believe it because it's true. Just trust me on that one. Uh, have some confidence. You know, believe in the me that believes in you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just all about confidence and having the right mindset. Always have fun with it. There's... You don't have to worry so much about like rules and the proper way to do things. I know it's like really kind of stressful at times, and you feel like uh, maybe if I knew what brush Psyker was using, like that would that's the key that I need. Um, but I think the most one of the most important things that I ever heard someone say was that you know the best art is always painted with the worst brush, and I just love that because it's so true. It's it's all about kind of not living in a world where there's no like um there's no limits you want to have limits because limits are what makes you be creative it's what kind of can push you to that next level you always want to feel like you're limited in some way and that's what's going to make you constantly uh get better well that's a great way to end this interview and i want to thank you for uh taking the time <laughs> out of your busy schedule to <laughs> <laughs> my very busy schedule to yeah to spend time and yeah no that's that's really great i i totally agree with you that limits are what create creativity for sure for sure yeah and, uh, yeah i think I'll there's work, probably I'll... a more proper version of a quote like that by like Thomas, you know, Edison or something, I don't forget. But I, it's 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 an idea that's been around for a long time that, you know, uh, you know, limitation is what breeds creativity and it's it's true. So don't worry too much about what brush to use. Just you can play with them yourself and figure out what what works for you or what doesn't work, but what you think you can make work, which is kind of what I did. I was like I I didn't like the brush that I currently use in every video. I hated it at first, but I was just like, whatever, I'm going to make it work. And I just kept using it. And now I feel like I have such a weird control over it. And it's like this control. I'm I'm talking about the thick and thin pen and painter. Right. And like when I, anytime I recommend it to someone, they're like, it doesn't look the way you, it looks when you use it. I'm like, yeah, it sucks. Don't use it. And it's just like, but I'm just, it's it's my bad brush. It's what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. I think you can get good at anything you use often enough you'll make it work yeah because yep. i get that a lot where people will say it doesn't look like the way you use it it's like well it's practice <laughs> take some time but yeah all right so thanks cynics yeah. and thanks everyone for watching yeah it was a lot of fun thanks for having me bye all right